Hello and welcome back, Sleepy What's It here with another miniatures video. In today's video, we're going to be doing a little paint along on how to paint this Imperial Fist Space Marine. The alternate title of this video could have been How to Drive Yourself to Drink in 14 Easy Steps Using Yellow Paint and Freehanding. Hopefully, you'll learn a bit from my mistakes that I make here, and we'll have a more pleasant time painting your Yellow Space Marine. If you haven't seen one of my paint alongs before, welcome, and I hope you stick around. I put markers throughout the video at good times to pause and reproduce the steps I just described. They look a little bit something like this. Also, this paint scheme is meant to be accessible to beginners, so I'm going to be keeping it to some simple techniques, base coating, shading, dry brushing, and just a little bit of layering. The paint palette is going to be relatively small, using only Citadel paints, other than a couple points where I'll indicate the Citadel equivalents. Each section of the paint job is going to be roughly base coated, shaded, and highlighted. I might indicate multiple colors that I highlight with. If you only have one of them or just the original base color, you can just use that and not do the extra steps. How we're going to be painting is very open to do the basic thing and then refine it. So you can stop at any point and have a decent paint job for the part of the model that we're working on. You can think of some of the highlighting stuff as more advanced techniques or aspirational if you're a completely new painter. Anyway, with that all, all the way, let's get down to some painting. I'm not going to walk you through how to assemble and prime your mini, since I've done that in a number of videos before, and I'll link down below if you need to review it. The yellow that we're going to be basing out is uh, Averland Sunset, which is a nice, warm, rich yellow with a touch of brown or orange to it, as opposed to the more bright, lemony yellows that you, can, you sometimes see. This will probably take three coats to get good coverage if you've thinned it down enough, Yellows from GW just generally don't have a, a tendency to be that opaque. This will require some patience and time to get it smooth. Next thing we're going to be doing is shading uh, to establish some shadows on our model and to fill in those panel lines. We're going to be using Agrax Earthshade here for shading. I've thinned it down with a bit of Lamian Medium, but you can also use water to thin it down. This makes the wash a little bit less saturated and flow a little bit better since it's going to be really prone to staining the yellow. It's better to have to do two passes of shading instead of having instead of putting too much on to begin with because it's hard to take it off after you put it on. After letting the shade dry completely, we're going to move on to brightening up our model and establishing some directionality of our light. Even when we're being careful, there's probably going to still be some dirtying or staining of the base yellow where we don't want it, so we're going to need to clean it up. This is done by using a big old dry brush uh, with our original Averland Sunset on it. We're going to be uh, trying to get all of the broad, flat panels uh, and things like that clean, but not uh, not fill in any crevices uh, too much or get like really under things. So I'm using this big, soft dry brush and doing a broad up and down uh, motion. If you're an absolute beginner or just wanting to get a really quick table ready paint job down, this is probably the point where you can move on to the next color region. Uh, similarly for other areas, just highlighting after the shade with either the original base color uh, it can be sufficient, but I'm going to be showing some more highlighting to really take that our paint job up a notch or two. The first highlight that we're going to be doing is using Uriel Yellow, which is a nice bright yellow, though something like Phalanx Yellow could also be used here. This is going to be another broad highlight like our cleanup, but this time we're going to be just doing down strokes. This will allow us to be only depositing paint on the tops and sides of the model, thus making them brighter than the undersides, thus establishing the idea of a light source from above. The second highlight that we're going to be doing uh, uh, on our yellow armor is going to be using a bit of a Screaming Skull, which is a warm off white beigey color, So, but we're only going to be using it for more of like edge highlighting and point, like detailed highlighting. You can this either do this either using layering techniques using a standard brush, or by doing some controlled dry brushing using a small flat dry brush. If you're dry brushing, you just want to go over the areas with the raised details that you want to highlight, not just be blindly stroking over large panels So because you don't want to get yellow, this everywhere on your model. This would be a good time now to pause the video and go apply some paint to your model. Now that we have the yellow of the power armor done, we can move on to accent it to turn our generic yellow space marine here into a proper member of the Imperial Fists. We're going to start this process by painting the symbol on his chest, also known as the Aquila. I'm going to show two different red recipes in this video, the darker one that I'm using now and then later a brighter one. It isn't essential that you use two different re uh, reds, 
if you're wanting to get something tabletop ready quickly or just limit the amount of paints that you're using. But looking at various lore references and like official color gu uh, guides, the red on the Aquila is distinctively darker than the other red that we're going to be using on the model. So we're going to start by basing this out using corn red. Make sure to thin this down and use a smaller brush so you can keep it under control because basically any mistake that you're going to make here is going to require touching up the yellow, the power armor, which is going to be a pain because yellow doesn't cover well, so you're going to have to do multiple passes to clean it up. Once we have our two thin coats down to establish our base color, we're going to move on to shading. I've used Caribou Crimson here for shading, which is a dark purple red tone. It gives me a very clean look. If you're not wanting to buy yet another shade paint, Agrax Earth Shade will work here, though it does run the risk of looking a little bit dirty or dull in comparison. Regardless of which shade you use, make sure to thin it down and keep it uh, to keep the saturation under control. If you want to take it up a notch, uh, we have a bit more highlighting we can do. The first uh, level of highlighting we're going to do is some thin edge highlighting using Wizdaka Red, just going kind of along the upper parts of the feathers on the wings and those res raised details on the skull. And then for a point highlight, we're going to come in with Wild Rider Red, which is an almost orange red color just to brighten up the ends of the feathers and the top of the skull, like just really get the, uh, the most extreme points of the highlights with that. You can pause now and go paint the Aquila on your model. The next color we're gonna be painting on our model is the brighter red I mentioned. Depending on the role and company of your Space Marine, you may not actually need to do this step because my mini is a sergeant, his, he his helmet on his belt, is going to be painted this red and since i really like the yellow red combo i'm going to make him be from the third company so the trim on his shoulder pads are also going to be red for non-sergeants you'll likely have a different helmet color and as i mentioned the trim is company specific the imperial fist codex is a good reference for all these details and there's a number of good resources online that summarize them of what your standard or, or codex compliant color options are anyway we're going to be starting out by using mephiston red which is a color I probably should just stop using since I always stumble over how to pronounce it. Anyway, uh, after a shading, I'm going to be using Carabur Crimson again, which, as I said, it gives us a cleaner look, but Agrix Earthshade shade could be used instead. The first highlight that I'm going to be doing is e Evil Sun Scarlet, and then all my detailed highlighting I'll be doing using Wild Rider Red. Since the helmet isn't being worn on my model, I'm not painting the lenses since they're kind of awkward to reach and not very visible. If you want to paint them, you're probably going to want to go a blue, so something like Lothram blue or Caligar blue would be a good color to choose for that. I would pause the video now and go paint the helmet and trim of your model as desired. For the remaining colors we're going to be painting, they look better over darker undercoats or have a dark base coat. So we're going to be doing some undercoating before we get going on them. For areas that are going to be black, like the back of the joints, the body of the bolter, uh, the hair, we're going to be basing them using Abaddon Black. Additionally, for any areas that are going to have gray metallic colors on them, we're going to be basing out using Abaddon Black. For the exposed skin, I'm going with a darker skin tone for my model, since I think it works um, color-wise uh, well with the yellow and red. So I'm going to be basing out using Cash and Flesh. Uh, feel free to base out your skin tone with what, a different color if you want to go with a different skin tone. And also for the gold metallic areas, I'm going to be undercoating them using Cashian Flesh, though any warm dark brown would work well for that. You should pause the video and go base and undercoat all these areas before proceeding. The first area that I'm going to be detailing after getting the dark undercoats done is the hair and the backs of the joints since they're black. Since these are black, we already painted with Abaddon Black as an undercoat, so that will be our base coat also. Also, since uh, they're black, we don't really need to shade them since we don't need to make them any darker. We just need to highlight them. I first highlighted using Eschen Gray following along the edges of the ribbing and the hair. Also on the hair, I tried to give it a bit of fuzziness along the edge and streaking across the surface. And then for detailed highlighting, I use Dawnstone, which is a light gray. For the hair, if you're wanting an older looking sergeant, you could push more towards a white uh, in your highlights, but I think he looks pretty well seasoned already. You should also highlight the bolter on your, uh, uh, your model uh, uh, at this point, even though I don't show it here. I'm not sure why I didn't paint it at this point. I had to catch it later. I think I just honestly forgot to do it. 
Anyway, you should pause the video now and go highlight the black regions on your model. After highlighting the black regions of the model, we're going to move on to painting the rest of the areas that we undercoated in Abaddon Black earlier. This is going to be our gray metallic or steel color regions. This includes elements like the uh, on the bolter, vents on the backpack, and some piping and other elements on the, like the hip and helmet region. The base color we're going to be painting here is Lead Belcher. Since this is a metallic paint, it'll tend to be a little bit thicker than your standard matte paint, so make sure to thin it enough to avoid clogging uh, the details. The black undercoat should help you with getting good coverage here. Once the base coat is down, we're going to shade all these metallic elements using a black wash, specifically Nuln Oil. And once that shading is dried, we're going to do a single highlight using Rune Fang Steel. If you're wanting to do some real fine details like surface level scratching or point highlights on really reflective areas, you can use Stormhose Silver, but honestly, I've moved away from trying to incorporate those really fine details in my metallics on my tabletop quality minis since they don't i tend to just blow those details out uh, you should pause the video now and go paint the steel elements of your model after completing the steel metallic elements on the model we're going to move on to the gold metallic elements this can be areas like the various skulls that are festooned all over the model and the little reliquy on the belt there's one skull in the pistol holder that I, in theory, should be painting after I painted the leather, but if you're careful, it shouldn't be that too much of an issue. The undercoat for all these areas should be a warm brown color, so we can base coat uh, using Retribute or Armor uh, and getting decent coverage. Once we have that base coat down, we're going to be shading using Recolin Flesh Shade. If you're trying to reduce the number of shade uh, paints that you're using, again, you can use Agrax Earth Shade here, but your gold is just going to come out a touch duller. Uh, to highlight this air area after the shade is dried, I'm using Auric Armor. As with the steel areas, I'm only doing a single highlight uh, for the reasons I mentioned uh, above. But if you wanted to uh, do some more detailing work, Stormhost Silver wouldn't be a bad choice. You can pause now and go paint the gold on your model. Now that we have the metallics out of the way, we can focus on the face. I'm going for a darker skin tone, as I mentioned before, so I based out using Cachian Flesh Tone uh, when I was undercoating the gold areas. If you're doing a different skin tone, you'd probably want to base out using a different color at this point, but you're probably already skipping this section, so whatever. Anyway, I then shaded using Agarx Earthshade. I think I went a bit heavy here since I ended up with a bit of a glossy look uh, to the skin. That or I accidentally used the gloss version of the shade uh, from the cupboard. If you're not wanting as a heavily defined shadows, or if you've picked a flesh tone base that's a little bit too cool, Recon with Flesh Shade would be a good alternative here to uh, help with that. To highlight, I did my first pass using Blood Reaver fr uh, Flesh, and then I followed this up by doing some detailing work using Night Quester Flesh. I didn't paint the eyes on this model, but uh, if you were planning on it, you would want to use a warm off-white thin down on a small brush to just lightly touch them to give the impression of eyes. With all the main elements of the model painted, there's some detailing sections that uh, we can paint to make our paint job look more finished. If you're just wanting to hit a three color standard speed paint type thing, you can just skip all this. But these little details can really pull together a model without a ton of work. I I'm going to just kind of rapid fire through all these since this can be relatively simple. For the belt and uh, pouches, uh, we're going for a dark leather effect, so I'm basing out using Rhinox Hide. For the paper on the Purity Seal slash Participation Ribbon, I'm painting using a uh, palette of witch flesh, but any warm off-white color would work. Anything that looks like a bone or a pale skin tone like Raycarth flesh, things like that would work fine. And then for the wax on the purity seal, I'm using screamer pink, though a red like our corn red or Miss Fist on red from before would work too. All these details are going to get a quick wash using Agrax Earth Shade to pull them together and uh, define some of the details. And after that's dried, um, the edges of the leather are going to be Highlight using Doom Bowl Brown uh, with some surface wear being added by dragging a mostly clean brush across the flat areas. For the parchment, it's just going to be highlighted with whatever ba off-white base color you used. And same thing for the seal, just highlighting the skull and the edges of the wax to make them stand out. You can pause now and go paint all these details on your model. Now that we have the main model completed, uh, we're going to move on to placing the roll and chapter markings. 
If you have access to the official trans for this, I highly recommend using them, since freehanding some of these uh, elements was a major pain. If you're planning on painting any significant number of Imperial Fists, uh, like pretty much any Space Marine chapter, I would highly recommend spending the money buying transfers, unless you just have way too much time on your hands. It, your life is going to be so much easier, and you're going to have a better result using transfers. Since I'm only painting a single model and I don't have the official transfers, I'm just going to have to get creative and do a bit of freehanding also. To start all this, I'm sealing the shoulder pads with some gloss sealer from Reaper, but any varnish would work. This is the key from pulling up any of the paint when applying transfers and just generally make touch-ups a, touch a little bit easier. I'm doing the right shoulder first, which has the roll symbol. I don't have a black area, er, arrow on my transfer sheets uh, like I need for this model. And I really don't let, feel like, like freehanding it. I did that for the White Scars video, and it kind of sucked. So instead, I'm going to take this spare ultramarine transfer that I'm never going to use and apply it to that shoulder. And once that's positioned and sealed in a place, I'm going to trace it over it using black, Abbott on Black. I originally tried uh, getting sneaky and using a, a black felt pen for this, but it wasn't gripping the sealer that I put over the uh, transfer well, so we had to fall back to paint. So basically, I'm using the transfer as a pattern for my free handing. You can pause the video now and go apply the roll symbol to your right shoulder however you want. Doing the left shoulder with the chapter symbol was a much more frustrating experience. I think what you're seeing here is actually my fourth attempt at doing this. I would have to check how much B-roll we ended up with from here. It looks good enough for me, but you'll notice it's not codex compliant. I highly recommend using a transfer for this since you're working over yellow, which is kind of painful to fix mistakes, and we're trying to make a relatively complex symbol. So unless you really know what you're doing, you're going to be having to redo it. If you're going to uh, freehand it, you want to start out by making a black circle as large as you need. There's two ways to approach this. One is to define across the size that you want and fill out the circle from that. I've always found with this I make a rounded square thing or maybe an egg, so I'm not a big fan of this method. The other way, which I prefer, is to put a dot in the center of what will be the circle and then slowly make rings around that with the brush expanding it outwards. I find this easier to get a symmetric shape with in a smooth application. Once you have your black circle done, you'll want to have a, in that a slightly smaller white circle. For this, I didn't use Citadel paints because all of their whites are chunky, don't flow well, and just generally I dislike working with them. So instead I used pure white from Reaper. And I just basically followed the same uh, dot and rings pattern as before. Uh, don't worry if you're not super even with the white uh, along the edges, since you can use a thin brush and your black paint to reline the edge. In theory, you could have just skipped doing a black circle and done a larger white circle, then use the uh, black paint to edge it. But I find black paint flows a bit better, and it, it would just easier to establish the original circle in black first. Once you have your white circle established, you need to put the fist logo on it. I failed horribly at this three times and just eventually gave up and decided to paint a cat uh, paw instead. So I guess I've made a member of the Imperial Paws here. Uh, if you want to learn how to freehand the fist uh, logo, there are a number of tutorials that will come up in your favorite search engine. I can't really recommend a specific one since I failed miserably at this, but they seemed like they were good. This is more user error to be honest. If you want to make a member of my custom Imperial pause chapter, you'll want to put a small dot in the lower third of the uh, white circle on the white line, and then do a circle, a little dot above that, and then do uh, two more on the left and the right, but a little bit lower, uh, to kind of make a lobed triangle that's the center bean of the palm. And then we're going to make four small dots above that. They're going to be the toe beans, making sure to place the first one uh, on the outside edge with enough space that you can fit in another one before the center line. Since we have a symmetric number of dots here, there none of them should be on the center line. And with all that uh, painting done, I'll put down a layer sealer on both shoulders to make sure that I don't damage any of my amazing artwork. Uh, you can pause the video now and add a chapter logo to your model. With that exercise and frustration done, uh, we have one thing left to do before we seal up our model and never paint another Imperial Fist, and that is the basing of our model. It, since I did red accents already on the model, I've decided to go with a red texture paste to kind of keep the palette together. I've uh, put down a layer of Martian Iron Crust using a sculpting tool. 
After getting it spread out, I pat the paste using the rounded side of the tool to give it some ridges and just general texture. And once this is dried, I apply a wash of Agrax Earthshade to deepen the shadows. And again, once the shade is dried, I highlight using a dry brush of Astaroth Red. I also did a bit of dry brushing on the boots and shins to give it kind of a dusty appearance. Uh, if you don't have this specific color, since it's a dry brushing paint, some of the reds that we used before could work for our dry brush highlighting, or something that's more of like a rusty brown red color is really what you're wanting to tie. It's uh, just a little bit brighter than what the uh, March and Iron Crust was. And once I had my texturing done, I just used a big ba uh, basing brush and a bit of Abaddon Black to color the rims of my base. You can uh, pause the video now and go base your model. So here's how my Imperial Fist slash Imperial Paw came out. Honestly, I'm quite pleased with how this model turned out in spite of the issues I had during the painting process. I'm not going to go out and paint an entire army of Imperial Fists now, but I think he'll look good on the shelf next to my other Loyalist Space Marines. While working on this model, I was also painting a Dark Angel Space Marine as things were drying and things like that. So, there, so that's completed, so there should be another video soon-ish uh, covering how to paint in a Dark Angel. But after that, I think I'm going to be putting this Loyalist Space Marine project on the back burner for a bit. The videos haven't been doing that well, and I've been uh, ill for the last little bit, so overall my hobbying output has dropped uh, noticeably. So instead, I'm going to be focusing on making videos based off the personal projects I've been working on. So uh, you'll likely be seeing me engaging in some nostalgia painting for some uh, 90s era vampire counts in the future, since that's why I've been uh, building up recently. Also, maybe some more theory-based videos that don't depend on me painting and recording an entire project to make the video. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please give the video a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you want to help the channel materially with things like supplies and captioning services, I have an account over on Coffee where I can accept donations. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.